briefly um, summarize this, what are the drivers for, for customers. Um, there are internal reasons why customers are looking at the topic. There are external reasons. I basically summarize them into three. There's cost, there's legislation, and then there's brand. Um, and so all three may be a factor. Any one of the three is usually a factor. <clears throat> so when you focus on legislation, parts of the world are doing. And I kind of get the feeling, based on what I'm learning from Idris and what the local team has told me, is that Australia is kind of in the crossroads right now, basically um, trying to figure out what are the initiatives um, that you guys want to implement. So this is a good place to be in, by the way, because you can learn from what other countries have done, both good things as well as not so good. And we have plenty of lots of good things in the US. Um, the Europeans actually have done many good things. So you can really pick and choose. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a couple of examples of different either legislation or private industry efforts that are going on in, other, in both Europe as well as North America. Um, if you have questions, again, we have. Um, so with this is um, it's a, it's a uh, directive that was put together by Her Majesty's government um, last year. And basically, it's, it's called the ICT Directive for all government data centers in the UK. It actually goes into a, a great level of detail for what needs to be done and how it should be done and why should it be done. So I would encourage you to um, to read it. Um, it's, a, it's a really, really well put together um, document. Um, and it actually is easy to read too. Even I could read it. Um, but it goes through, and in the appendix, it actually goes into very detailed um, recommendations for what the the data center managers, and actually not data center, but just ICT managers should do in the UK. So again, that's, to me, that this is kind of the, the best example of what's been done from what I've seen. Another, um, so that was from an energy consumption um, point of view. Another uh, approach, and this is, um, although I have the European Union example here, that actually also has been done by the US. And that is, um, you know, actually going Green IT is, is a misnomer. It's actually not the right thing about it because IT is not green. IT actually is very toxic. We ought to be calling it greener IT. That's my own personal opinion. So from my perspective, the best IT is the one that doesn't get built. But assuming that it does get built, then it becomes then a problem of how you dispose of it. And putting it into a container, shipping the disposed assets off to the third world is not the right answer. You have to basically do the um, do the right thing in terms of salvaging the materials that you can, being able to dispose of the toxic um, chemicals that are in there, mercury and others, um, responsibly, and then be able to do this in such a way that that's cost effective. So in Europe, they put together what's called WEEE, -E, um, which is a directive for how to do that. In the U.S., <coughs> we actually have the EPA, and the worst thing that can happen to a company is to read them for headlines that the material was found in the landfill. That is a <coughs> brain nightmare for any company in the US or Europe and I assume also in Australia. So again, these directives are very proscriptive on what needs to be done uh, from disposal of the material. Okay? 